the West Fjords, a real magical place. It is said that supernatural beings live in Iceland's waterfalls. It is also said that the area we are going to visit is famous for ghosts and everyday witchcraft. But what Iceland's West Fjords are actually most famous for these days is their remote natural beauty. Join a journey on the roads less traveled away from the usual tourist routes. Welcome to the West Fjords. What happened in the last episode? We took off from Iceland's capital city Reykjavik to a remote little island on Iceland's west coast. The special feature? Nobody is allowed to bring their vehicles to that island. So we had to leave the keys of our motorcycles with complete strangers on the ferry we took and to trust them that they would drive off our motorcycles on the other side of the fjord. The next day we were back on the ferry departing the island hoping that we soon would be reunited with our bikes. So I'm back on the boat and I have these things here and now I have to go down here to the cafeteria to hopefully pick up our keys and then our bikes should be at the harbor. So step number one, pick up the keys and hope they're still there. It's Leah, L-E-A. L-E-A. Yes, that should be. Two keys in this bag. Mission successful! Yay! So that's where we're gonna go soon and then we're gonna drive along these things here. With the first views of the West Fjords that we plan to explore the next two or three days, our excitement level was constantly rising getting to an absolute high when we spotted our two motorcycles from the ferry at our arrival in Brandslökur. We just spotted our motorcycle. I think you can't see it, but they're here behind a white pickup truck. The West Fjords. Yeah, I'm expecting a lot of them because people say it's one of the remotest places here in Iceland uh, besides of maybe the highlands in the middle of Iceland but they say because the West Fjords are kind of like I mean it's not hard to reach but um, you have to drive around a lot so you kind of like start at one end and you always have to really like go like zigzag around the fjords so you basically drive a lot of kilometers for not traveling that far and I think because of that shape and because of the roads I think many of them are still gravel roads um, people hesitate a bit to go there and that's actually why I'm excited to go there because I hope it will be a nice and um, remote nature experience. Our motorcycles are here we just went off this ferry and now we are first having to find some gas because afterwards we're gonna go in a gravel road that is i think pretty remote so yeah first thing gas and because of the electricity shortage in the town yesterday we couldn't fill up there so that's why we need to do a little excursion now In order to fill up our motorcycles, we have to go a few kilometers in the other direction than what we planned because there's otherwise no petrol station no more. So we're basically not riding now where we want to go. So here the gas station should be. I guess the travel partner doesn't see it. I don't see it either. Ah, there it is. It's small, but it exists. Very good. Petrol station with a view. Mm. 
Besides of knowing that we wanted to travel the West Fjords, we didn't have any detailed schedule, pre-booked places to stay or an exact clue where we wanted to go. But when looking at the West Fjords on a map, you will quickly find out that you do a lot of riding for covering pretty small distances due to the road leading along many of those fjords. And so the feeling of driving back and forth would accompany us on the next days. So now that we have our motorcycles back, fill them up and are all set, welcome to the West Fjords. We are now on the most southern part of the West Fjords. So our general direction for today will be going even more west and at the same time heading north. Uh, and I think this already looks so beautiful and stunning here. Um, what a kickoff to this amazing trip. We were now traveling Route 63, that is also called Bildudalsvegur, and one of the Westfjord's easy but at the same time scenic rides. Route 63 consists of a combination of normal paved roads, semi-paved gravel roads in a very good shape, and is also a combination of mountain roads and coastal fjord roads. So in my opinion, the best of two worlds. From here, we are heading to our first point of interest of the day and we already decided against another one because we initially wanted to go to a place called La Trabiarg or something like this, um, which is supposed to be the most western point of Iceland and actually also of Europe. Uh, but the problem is that it's a dead end road, so it would have been a detour of about 90 kilometers or at least probably two to three hours due to those being gravel roads and we decided that's too long for just being at the most western point and also the weather didn't look so good there. If you guys are interested in visiting though, La Trabia is the westernmost point of Iceland and in Europe, but also the largest bird cliff in Iceland with a 14 km length and 441 meter height. The ride is supposed to take you over a pretty decent gravel road, so for everyone visiting this is an option for another excursion of the West Fjords. But we knew that we would ride along countless fjords for the next one or two days, so we decided to skip this one and head to another site instead. Launched in 1912, the whaling ship is the oldest steel ship in Iceland. During its active lifetime, the ship originally known as Globe 4 was sold around to a number of different countries before finding an Icelandic owner after World War II. Once whaling restrictions became more widespread, it was used for fishing herring in the waters of Iceland and got its new name Gorda BA-64 in 1963. After decades in service, the Gorda BA-64 was finally deemed unsafe in 1981 and as opposed to being scuttled, the old ship was run aground in Skapadalur Valley, where it remains to this day, falling apart bit by bit, telling the stories of a different century. We are back on the road and so far this route here is really stunning. The nice thing is that we don't only ride along fjords but that we also cross the mountains between the fjords kind of inland every now and then. Uh, so you really can experience everything. I have to admit that not so much more happened that I could tell you about because we were super busy with just enjoying the views and ourselves on these beautiful roads of Iceland.
So the part that we're driving at the moment, you can see that behind me here. Um, this part is actually gravel now, but it's a super good road and it's absolutely stunning nature. Um, every now and then I'm like find another tourist, but yeah, you can ride very nicely. So we now left the course to cross these mountain here inland and wow, I feel it's getting more stunning and spectacular minute by minute, if that's even possible. So beautiful. We left Route 63 for Route 60 that was taking us on the most scenic road of the day so far. Route 60 is named Westfjarda Vegur and is one of the most scenic roads in the West Fjords. Coming from south like we did, Route 60 first crosses the mountainous landscapes and then leads along the coastline and fjords. Views along the road are amazing and unique. This was definitely my favorite part of the day. So the landscape up here is pretty beautiful. Um, it changed a lot from the kind of like direct date of yours. Now up here it's kind of moon-like, actually pretty cool. <laughs> Look what is this a funny little tractors. Uh, anyways, we are about to visit a waterfall now and this one is famous in this whole area. And actually the cab driver in Reykjavik suggested um, to us to go to this waterfall. So I guess it's pretty well known here in the West Fjords. The Njandi waterfall is called the jewel of the West Fjords for a good reason. It's the biggest waterfall in the West Fjords and people say one of the most beautiful waterfalls in Iceland. The Njandi, or Fjallfoss as it's often called, cascades some 99 to 100 meters and is said to look like a bridal veil. On top it is 30 meters wide and widens up to 60 meters at the bottom. The Icelandic term Dinjandi means thunderous or resounding, and I guess it is self-explaining where this name is coming from. In Iceland it is said that a supernatural being lives in every waterfall, and if you visit the majestic Dinjandi fall, you might start to believe these old sagas. West fjords in three words back and forth, which I think counts as one word. Remote and pretty and fantastic landscape. We will call it a day soon. I just booked an accommodation via booking. Uh, I had actually quite a lot of suggestions for stays here in the West Fjords. For example, from my friend Valle on tour, uh, who visited Iceland in the COVID year. And you, by the way, should follow. Uh, but anyways, all of these days that I was recommended from friends were fully booked. So we had to take the only thing available within, I think, 100 kilometers or so. The West Fjords are a pretty remote part of Iceland. But due to the West Fjords being more remote, there are also not endless options for accommodation. On this day, a recurring issue of our Iceland trip took its course to find accommodation spontaneously, which here in Iceland turned out to be more difficult than anywhere else I have traveled before. So we were lucky today, we just got the last room in this little village here called Pingeri. Um, dear Icelandic followers, I'm very, very sorry if I'm pronouncing things wrong. But hey, everyone, you have to know that the Icelandic language has a lot of letters I have not even seen ever before in my life. So obviously, unfortunately, I also have no clue 
how to pronounce them. If you guys know better, just drop a comment so all the other people visiting Iceland will not do the same mistakes I do. And then we enjoyed our dinner and were looking forward to the next days of riding. Good morning from Iceland. So we're departing now from the place where we stayed, which another motorcyclist who stayed there too described very precisely. He said, not very nice and kind of expensive. And I guess that's the truth, but it was the only place we could find yesterday. And um, we are continuing along the fjord, so there will be a lot of like going like this again. Weather is good. First things first, before riding along endless fjords, getting some petrol, because you never know when the next petrol station will be. Welcome to a new day of riding, our second day here in the West Fjords. We will ride along a lot of fjords today and that's why we decided to try to reach the end of the West Fjords today. So we can go on a new adventure with a bit different scenery tomorrow. But we will see nothing booked or finalized yet, so you never know where and how we might end up. Route 61 is also called Dupvegur and it's a beautiful paved road. The entire drive is coastal and copies the shape of fjord several times. So you have endless opportunities to ride right along the water and to enjoy the views on the still snow-capped mountains of Isafjardur Djup, which is a large fjord in the West Fjords and means ice fjords deep. We're gonna stop soon here in this village because there is a place here right on the road that I want to visit because I have seen some signs already uh, a few times today. The Arctic Fox Center is a non-profit research and exhibition center focusing on the Arctic fox, who indeed is the only native terrestrial mammal in Iceland. The center was established in 2007 in the village Sudavik of the West Fjords. The long-term aim is to collect all available knowledge and material relevant to the Arctic fox in past and present. Visitors can get to know more about the Arctic fox in the exhibition that is focusing on the biology and history of the Arctic foxes as a species, but also about the war that has been waged between the man and the Arctic fox since the early settlement of humans in Iceland. And here at the Arctic Fox Center, they as well have an Arctic Fox caged, which I'm actually not so happy about, not a big fan of caged animals. Traversing the West Fjords does require a lot of driving, but taking in the surrounding scenery proves what I always pray, that the journey can be as amazing as the destination. That's how the locals do it. A nice picnic with an even nicer view. The West Fjords are really only accessible in the summer months, from May to September. Snowfall is heavy in the region and the West Fjords sometimes get cut off from the rest of the country during the winter. Due to its lower population, the roads are not regularly maintained, so it's recommended to make use of the better road conditions in summer. And if you dare to visit the remote West Fjords, you will for sure get rewarded with these stunning views.
landscape of the West Fjords, I think it's an awesome place to start with Iceland because maybe it's as well not as much Iceland as you would imagine it from pictures because you have like all these very volcanic things in mind when you're thinking about Iceland and maybe not necessarily fjords when you're thinking about Iceland. And so it's maybe not the most typical things from Iceland, but I think that's why it's as well nice to start the journey with it. You're getting a little bit of different feeling and a different approach as well to the country. So for us, this was a perfect start. This is really crazy. This Route 61 just leads along fjords and along the coast for, I think, about 150 or even 200 kilometers or so. It's just beautiful like this here all the way and it's actually nice to drive because it's also curvy every now and then and not just like boring straight routes. The most eastern part of Route 61 crosses some more mountains before we reached our destination for this day, the town Holmavik. Holmavik is a small fishing town nestled by the large Steingrims Fjordur. It is the largest town in the region and also famous for its history of magic and sorcery. This is what you get in Iceland for about 200 euros. Size room like this with a motorcycle explosion. Due to its isolation, the locals have throughout the centuries preserved stories of strange beings, ghosts and everyday witchcraft. In this area, three men were burned at the stake for sorcery in 1654 and a period of witch craze followed from 1654 to 1690 in Iceland that has been called Brennuöldin or the Fire Century. Holmavik boasts two centers of research related to folklore and the history of Icelandic sorcery. The well-known Museum of Sorcery and Magic and the University of Iceland's Folklore Research Institute. I am in Holmavik now, which is actually a much cuter town than in the town we said yesterday. And I'm on my way to the supermarket now because we decided that we will take off early tomorrow because for some reason all hotels here in Iceland only serve breakfast at 8 which means if you have breakfast at 8 you never depart before 9 and because there is basically light here I think the sun rises at 4 or 3.30 or something like this in the morning so we are always awake super early and tomorrow we will use this to ride so I'm going to the supermarket now to buy some bread and maybe cheese for breakfast. This is the biggest supermarket in the area. Let's see what they have. Mission successful. I have a whole backpack. Oh, you don't see that now. I have a whole backpack full of snacks and drinks. Holmavik is also a small center of art. That's why it was one of my favorite small villages that we visited in all of Iceland. It has an art walk. You can find sculptures all over town and a rainbow color stairs is leading to Holmavik's church. And the town's restaurant, Café Ries, served the best pizza we had in Iceland. Even though I have to admit that it was the only pizza I had during the stay. So what's for dinner tonight? Tonight for dinner? Yeah. This pizza. pizza. Unbelievable. Icelandic pizza. Icelandic pizza. Very good. Oh, that's all for you? That's all for me. I'm not going to share. <laughs> what did you choose? Pepperoni, onion and mushrooms. And here the vegetable version. Mm. How was the pizza? Oh, wow! The best pizza in Holmavik. I would say it was very good. Guys, how did you like Iceland's remote west fjords? Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the ride. 
and leave a comment if you also think that there are supernatural beings living in waterfalls. The next episode will take us to the real north of Iceland, to the Troll Peninsula, the Arctic Bow Scenic Route, and the historical herring capital. Like always, tune in next Thursday to Ride On.